Oh, Captain, my Captain. Captain, urgent news from the General. Why not really blow it up, Captain? Captain Blob, bugging into Arsenal and Bayer. I'm getting her off, she's bad, Captain. My Captain. No, Captain, they're alive. Hey, guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Captain Crockpot, and uh, today we're going to do our first unboxing. We're unboxing Teen Spirit, and I'm super excited to dive in to show you the set and uh, just to, to, to walk through it and see what the cards do and see what the characters do and, and see all of it. Um, we get to use my knife. I got this knife from, uh, from Oton's bachelor party. Um, I'm not his bachelor party. I was a, a groomsman. That's what I meant. Uh, a groomsman for Oton, and uh, this is the knife he gave me. He gave all of his guys uh, different knives, and this was mine. If you know what movie this knife is from, comment below because I don't think anyone's going to get it. Uh, if you do, incredible. I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked. This is from a movie. It was used in a movie, and I love it. It's awesome. It's a two-hand, uh, I think it's a buck knife, so it's called, I'm not sure. Um, but it doesn't close on itself, which is great, so I don't cut my, my hand off. But that's what we're going to use. We're going to use that to, to open up this... Uh, this set here, so I don't want to damage anything. So let's use a nice knife. We're gonna go right in here, right above the uh, left quadratic, and uh, uh, underneath the lower scapula. Oh, you know what? Let's go right here. Let's go right here. This is this is risky stuff, actually. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. All right. We've made the first incision. Oh, yeah, hot diggity dog. All right, and that's honestly, that should be all we need of that knife, but uh, there you go. Comment below, where's that knife from? What movie is it in? It's a pretty significant scene. So, we got Teen Spirit. Teen Spirit is an interesting set because I don't know about you guys, but I don't know anything about these characters. I don't know anything about them, uh, don't really care about them, and I was not excited about this set, um, to be frank. I wasn't, wasn't excited, didn't think it was going to be a big deal, and uh, yeah, Squirrel Girl, Cloak and Dagger, Miss Marvel. The only one I had heard of was Miss Marvel. I've played these characters since then, and I have to say, I love this set. It's one of my favorite sets, um, and I think it is my favorite Marvel set. Um, yeah, Miss Marvel and Cloak and Dagger have just, just they. I, I love their play style. Absolutely awesome. Oh, before we before we get in there, let's look at the artwork. Check out this. We got the side art here. I'm not sure if this camera is going to get it or not, but. Here we go. We got some uh, some cloak here. Oop! There we go. What else do we have? Of course, rules. I'm not gonna walk you through the rules. You can do that yourself. Uh, as always, we have our punch boards. Um, yeah, looks great. Great punch boards. I sort of want to do it now, but you don't care, do you? We'll go through the tokens. So, we have the parking meter. It's a plus two. We have the garbage can lid. It's a plus one. Snow globe. It's a plus one. We have, for the schemes, we have the zoom, which is a look at the top three cards of any deck. Put, any, put them back in any order. We have the Helium Balloons, two, uh, move two spaces, gain one action, and we have the XL Slushy, which is recover three health. I wish I was seeing this for the first time because then I could give you like my actual genuine reactions, but I've, I know this board, I know this map, I know the, the items. The Slushy is massive, and uh, you will fighters will go here just for the Slushy. Um, it's sort of like, uh, I forget what it's called, but the, the item that lets you get your discard back from uh, Hell's Kitchen. It's that significant. It's a very significant item, and it's something to play around for sure. Um, you're gonna want to position around it. 
here's our board. And um, we can go through that later. You know, let's go through that later. Okay. Very cool. So here are the minis. I love the minis. Really beautiful stuff. A lot of squirrels. I see all the different squirrels down there for Squirrel Girl. Um, Miss Marvel. She looks pretty solid. I guess she's not very solid. She's, she's more like malleable. And then Cloak and Dagger. My favorites from the set. Um, not necessarily visibly, but just play style. Really, really happy with them. And I, I want so badly, I feel like she fits in there. I don't know how it works, but I feel like she fits right in there. And like, he could like snuggle on, <laughs> around her. I, I don't know how it would work, but it feels like she just goes right in there. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but awesome. I can't wait to get these painted. Definitely excited to get these painted. And then we have our three decks. Let's look those in a second. The insert, I'll be getting rid of it because I have my own storage solution, but it looks looks very cool. All right, we have, uh, we got that. That's pretty cool. Awesome. And then the back, the usual. Looks good. We're gonna, we gotta decide here. We gotta leave it up to, to fate. Uh, we're gonna roll a dice. We'll open this one first. If it's one and two, three, four, five and six, it's a three. So we open up Cloak and Dagger. Destiny, just mm, destiny. Okay, so Cloak and Dagger. This is, uh, this is like the Raptors. They are, they are two fighters, um, but they're both heroes. So they're the only other characters that do that. They're melee, eight health, both of them, and they're uh, move two. Their ability is Umbra. After you attack, if Cloak dealt at least two damage to combat damage, your opponent discards one card, and then Refraction. After you attack, if Dagger dealt at least two combat damage, gain one action. So they are all about getting damage over the top for two damage. Um, and uh, I mean, the way I like to play them personally is I like to throw dagger at them uh, and just combo, 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 combo. Um, if you can catch them with no defense, every card in your hand will, will get that ability. So that's important to know that all your damages are worth two at least. So it's a fun little choice. Do you, do you attack with him to get them to discard the card or do you attack with her to get the action? So we have Channel the Dark. If Cloak played this card, place the opposing fighter adjacent to Dagger and gain one action. So let's say that he's here, Deadpool's there, Cloak attacks. You can now move this fighter there or there and you'll gain an action, which of course then you want to string more attacks with Dagger most likely. Another cool way to use this, let's say that it's like this. Cloak attacks. Well guess what? Now you've got, wait, sorry. Now you've got a pin. You could throw him there. Now you have the pin. Um, and another card will trigger as well. You could also use it to get him out of here. We'll say that cloak is low on health. You throw it, boom. Throw over there, you're good to go. A lot of, lot of ways to use this card. This is one of his most important cards uh, for sure. Would not boost with it is absolutely important, um, but also it's an any, so she can use it. You can use this in your end turn, your end game combo. Uh, when, you're, when they have no defenses, you can just throw those cards, get the actions, make them discard, all that stuff. The next card we have is Chosen Fate. Chosen Fate is also a very cool card. It's very, very needed. It says, deal up to four damage to one of your fighters. Your other fighter recovers that amount of health and you draw two cards. So this is important situation like this. You have one health, you have a health. You could do 
this. You could bring down cloak to, let's say, let's say four. So she heal, she, he dropped four. So she then gets to heal for four. So that would bring, bring her up to five. That's pretty cool. Another really cool thing is like this. Let's say that dagger is at one, cloaks at four. You could use this card to kill dagger. You could damage dagger for four damage. She was only at one, doesn't matter. Cloak will now heal for four. So you can over heal or over damage to heal for the full amount. This is a great card uh, in very, in a lot of situations where you need to uh, do certain, certain healing when you're low on health. Uh, the most important card of the deck, commanding impact. This is so important because, well, it's just, I mean, it triggers off of so many things. Um, when you have uh, the five damage, you're a lot more likely to hit that plus two, uh, that two damage. So you're going to get Umbra, you're going to get Refraction a lot easier. Um, you don't want to waste these. You want to make sure that these hit. Uh, you're also getting the draw, which is super important in their deck. The draw does not come very easily. Um, the draw is important to, to keep up that advantage, keep up the aggression, the tempo. Um, the next card we have. Um, is a cloak specific card. It's called Dark Force Dimension. Place the opposing fighter in any space. Your opponent discards a card. So as you can see, this is a four. What's, what's great about that is, is, is this. If you attack as cloak and they faint it, you're still hitting over the top for two. So you're still going to get your ability. And so they'll get to discard a card. They'll have to discard a card. If they don't defend with a feint, let's say they just take it to the face. Well, now they're taking four damage and they're discarding two cards. You get to place them in any space at all. So again, you can use this to set up pins. You can use this to get them the heck out of there. Um, you could do, there's a lot of things. You can put them next to a dagger to finish them off and they're discarding two cards. Um, there, there's just a lot to do. So when cloak attacks, most likely it's gonna be one of these two cards. It'll most likely be a channel in the dark or a dark force dimension. One of those two cards is coming. They're both good to faint. You want to faint his attacks for sure. The next card we have is a faint. It's a faint, classic faint. Uh, I think it's important in this deck and uh, nothing else to talk about it. It's a faint. Traverse the darkness. Move each of your fighters with two spaces. Um, this is a great one to, let's say you're into a ranged fighter. Ranged fighter shoots. Well, you can do, let's say it was like this. Again, you can get that pin. They shoot, you play Traverse the Dark Force. You move up, you are now there. You've, you, you've, you've moved in. Um, it's also move each of your fighters with two spaces. So that's very important. Uh, you can use it for getting closer. You can use it for getting further away. Uh, a lot of scenarios. As you can see, I really love getting the pin. Um, that's definitely my preferred strategy. Um, but pins are not always great to hold because you need cards in your pins. This one is very, very important. It's called Into the Darkness. Uh, after combat, you choose one of the fighters in the combat and move them up to three spaces. So you get to move either one. This is similar to the Houdini card. And it's going to be either the attacker uh, or defender, the opponent or your fighter that's being attacked or, or attacking. And again, this is for, you can close the gap. You can use it to get out of combo attacks, get out of the zone. Um, there's a lot of ways to use this card, and it's a three, which is nice. Most likely you can be using this on defense. Into the Void, you may boost this attack. Um, not a great card, not a bad card. You, there are times where you'll want to boost it with your Light Force Barrage, make it a five. Um, it's really, I think the situation with this card is like this. If, if they're taking it to the face and you're gaining the action, do whatever you want. You could just leave it as is, get the uh, get the action if you're a dagger or have them discard as cloak. Um, let's say they defend with a, a four. You're not going to boost it because you don't have any four boosts. Um, but if they defend it with a three, you may want to boost it with three to, to get that, that two uh, over to trigger your ability. That may be a thing you want to do. If they defend it with a uh, two, of course, you'll definitely want to probably boost it for two and get over that. Um, it's situational. 
not a great card, um, but it's there. And it's an any. Life Force Barrage uh, is a crazy card. So Life Force Barrage is it's a seven valued attack. The, the effects cannot be canceled. And if you won the combat, you're going to take uh, damage equal to the amount of damage you dealt. It says you're a fighter, but it's, it, is, it will always be a dagger. Um, so she has to play that card. If you're at 8 health and you use this card and they take it to the face, you're at 1 health then. Now they're 7 health lower, but you're now at 1 health. If you use this card when you're at 7 health and they take it to the face, you're dead. So, uh, and a lot of people like to throw this one first, which means... I mean, there's, there's so many mind games that come from this, but because Life Force Barrage is guaranteed, it's guaranteed to trigger your ability, it's guaranteed to get you the extra action, it's really good to throw first. Um, and because of that, the opponent knows that. And so if they make you, if they just say, you know what, hit me, and you die, it's really bad for you. It's really, really bad for you. So you've got to choose when to use it. Um, so it's a lot of mind games, a lot of Wukong mind games. This is a great time to use it, right here. You're sitting at one health, you throw that card. Uh, that's pretty great. Living Shadow, this is a very important card. This is very, very important. And let's say that Muldoon is attacking Dagger. Well, you're gonna play this card, Living Shadow. Living Shadow says, if Dagger played this card, she swaps spaces with Cloak. Cloak is now the defender, and the value of this card is four instead. So they're t they're, they want to kill her because she is your damage. She's going to be comboing and getting all the damage out, messing you up. Uh, because of that, this card exists. Because you can swap, make it a four. He's taking less damage. She's looking good. She's sitting pretty. And uh, so that is that is a very important card. Um, of course, because of this card, they're going to most likely attack Cloak first. So it's one of those catch-22s. Another card. This is a great card. This is one of, the, one of the best cards in the deck. It's called Perfect Balance. If Cloak and Dagger are both adjacent to the opposing fighter, the value of this card is 6. This is important for... This is why pins are so nice. Um, That's why being adjacent is so nice, because as soon as you get adjacent, this card is what they're expecting. And it's a 6, so mostly... Most of the time, almost always, it will trigger your ability. Um, and it's a four versatile, even if it doesn't trigger. So it's still, it's still a great value, great card. And then we have the Living Light. Uh, if Cloak played this card to defend, Dagger recovers two health. If Dagger played this card to attack, Cloak recovers two health. So let's say that Cloak, sorry, Dagger, uh, let's say Cloak is down here. Cloak is at six health. Oh no. He's getting hurt. Dagger goes in, she attacks. He is going to heal back up to eight because she attacked. And let's say that Dagger, sorry, Cloak is attacked and Cloak defends with this card. If Cloak defends with this card, then you're gonna heal Dagger up. So this is a great card for doing exactly what you're wanting to do with their characters. Um, it's a great card. Well, there you have Cloak and Dagger's decks. Cloak and Dagger's deck, I guess it is there. They share it. Uh, lots of Ennies. There are the, there's a Dagger specific and Cloak specific. Really fun, um, really, really fun set. I don't know. I, I, they're not, we're doing the ladder right now um, this season. I'm not sure what season it is, maybe 14. Um, and Cloak and Dagger are getting spanked. Um, and I think that's because you really want full advantage as Cloak and Dagger. You want to pick the map, you want to get position, you want to go first. Uh, you want to aggress, and um, that's really the only way to do it. They, I've had the most fun games with them, and they're very thinky, very uh, tricky to, to, to do well. And I don't think they're, they're not S tier, they're not A tier, they may not even be B tier, but man, they're fun. All right, let's roll to see which one we do next. Uh, odds, evens. And we've got a three. So Squirrel Girl is next. So Squirrel Girl is 
a conundrum. She's a conundrum. She's exciting to play because she introduces a whole new thing. She introduces small fighters. And uh, in theory, she should be very exciting to play. She should be um, a menace, a problem. In reality, she's just not. And that stems from her, her boost values, honestly. Um, I think she needs full advantage just to be, to, just to have any chance of winning a game. She's at full advantage. Um, because if she gets put on a big map, or even just a regular sized map, like, she's in trouble. She needs a small, a small, small map um, to really have a chance at winning a game. But of course, we just started playing with her, and I haven't, I, I mean, I'd love to be proven wrong. I would love for her to be viable and to, uh, to be good, but I, I just haven't seen it. There's a lot of believers out there. I think Chad's one of the believers. Um, I'm not a believer. I have beaten her so many times pretty easily. Let's not be little, little grumps. This is, uh, this is her moment. This is her moment to shine, and this is Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl. She's a melee character. She has 13 health. She has a move of two. And her ability is go nuts. At the start of your turn, summon a squirrel in a space adjacent to Squirrel Girl, such as this. Squirrels are small fighters. Do not start with any squirrels on the board. Summoning is optional. You may summon a squirrel. You don't have to summon a squirrel. You will always want to summon a squirrel because your squirrels are your power and they will not be there for, for long. Uh, squirrels are easy to kill. Yeah, so you're gonna wanna do it every turn if you can't. There must be an, uh, an empty space. You can't place one in the same space as another squirrel. Um, you can only have at max four squirrels in one space at one time and they are small fighters. So they get to move through and opponents can move through them as well. Um, they can end on them, all that stuff. If an opponent is on the same space, they count as adjacent to the squirrels. And if any squirrel takes damage, uh, all the squirrels in that space are dead. So you're gonna want to spread them out. If you're, let's say we're doing like this. If you wanna, you wanna get about four always next to them. So if you can do this, something like that would be ideal. You're gonna have, this would be the space that, that Muldoon would attack because of what we have here. But um, yeah, you're not gonna wanna bunch them because if you bunch them and then he just kills one squirrel, they all die. So you wanna, you wanna be thinking about that as much as you can. So let's look at her cards. The squirrels, which you have eight of, there are eight squirrels. Your eight squirrels have six cards they can play. Bite of Steel is their attack. Um, it's a two attack with a two boost. It says during combat, if there are four or more squirrels in the opposing fighter's zone, the value of this card is five instead. So right now I attack with this card. It's a two, it's a two, it's a two. It is now not a two, now it is a five. Uh, it's in the zone of the opponent. So you don't need to be adjacent to the opposing fighter. That's important to know. So you could have all of your little squirrels, little squirrelies, um, just in yellow somewhere, and you could do that. There we go. Let's keep him far away from him. Um, so that's important to know. It's just in the zone. It is not adjacent. There's three of those. Then you have the Call of the Mild. Uh, the Call of the Mild says, during combat, if there are four or more squirrels in your fighter's zone, the value of this card is four instead. So it's an any, so Squirrel Girl could use it for defense, but it is the only card that the squirrels can use for defense. And so usually you'll find it as a, as a squirrel defense or a squirrel attack. It's a two versatile in your fighter's zone. So again, we don't need to be adjacent, which is nice. There's maybe there's a couple adjacencies, um, but we can put our squirrels there. And we have our four squirrels. 
So we could then attack him and it would be a four. Um, the way to defend this is so easy. Be uh, you get into a space with minimal zones. Like you go to, over to the green here, a little less, or to purple, um, which is not on screen. But if you go to a small zone area, the squirrels have to be bunched up and you can kill squirrels much easier. If you go to a big space with a, lot of, with a zone with a lot of spaces, uh, the squirrels can spread out, makes it a lot harder to kill the squirrels. Um, so that's how you counter the squirrel girl. We have the dash. This is a squirrel girl card. It's a three versatile, two boost. It says, after combat, move squirrel girl up to three spaces. So she gets attacked. Hey, she can come in and do shenanigans. Or she can leave and avoid shenanigans. Eat nuts. Oh, you know what? Before we continue, let me read all of this little clever card stuff. At the very bottom it says, much improved over the bite of plush. For bite of steel, um, dash, Pfft. quick silver, more like slow silver because she's so fast. <clears throat> and we have eat nuts. Squirrel girl recovers two health. Summon a squirrel in a space adjacent to squirrel girl. You, all these cards that summon squirrels are super, super important for winning your game, uh, for even having a chance, because you need to have your squirrels on the board. Um, I would not use this to wait. You want to be really smart with how you use it. Um, but you're going to recover two health. And it says, this is a normal side effect of eating nuts. Of course it is. You're going to heal and summon a squirrel. We have a faint. This, absolutely, one, there should be three copies of it in her deck. And then two, it should be an any, because uh, I know thematically it doesn't make sense why her squirrel's stopping effects of anything, but for gameplay-wise, she really needed it. Um, but so the squirrels can't, they can't stop any effects. So you will always trigger your abilities against the squirrels. That is huge. It's very important to, to know and to, to play around. Um, but it says, you know, it's a, it's a faint. And it says, not for the faint of heart. A little pun there from Squirrel Girl. We have Fuzzball Special. Fuzzball Special uh, says move each squirrel up to three spaces. This should be a great... I've never seen it played because I am always ranged against her. This is what, probably also why I do well against her, but uh, I'm always ranged in, against her, so I never end adjacent to her. I think if you end adjacent to her, you have a lot more uh, risk of being damaged because she could do something like this. First attack, move her squirrels around you, and then do a big combo on you. Um, but I guess if I was melee, that'd be scarier. So maybe disregard everything I've said so far because I only play range into her. Get him tippy toe. This is probably the most important card in your, one of the most important cards in your deck. But before I get there, how could I forget? Anyone else doing this movie, oh, sorry, this move is copying from me, the fuzzball special. Okay, um, and I, I, someone talked about that before. I, I forget what the lore is on that. Uh, so Squirrel Girl, it's a three versatile. It says, get him tippy toe. After combat, summon two squirrels in any space. And tippy toe, by the way, as far as I know, is this squirrel right here with the bow. All the other squirrels are just regular squirrels, but this is like the best friend squirrel or something. She's got a, a I think it's a bow, a pink bow. Uh, so you're going to summon two squirrels in any space. This is really important, and I honestly think this is what you mulligan for. I think you're going to want to open with this in your hand so that when you get attacked, that first attack, you can pop your squirrels out and speed up your whole process. One of the buffs to her that, that we've talked about and, and, and discussed in the, in the Discord is, is that she should, one, she should have a three boost in her deck for sure. Uh, if not just a move three in general. And then two, um, she should have, I think she should make two squirrels per turn. So the, uh, the get him tippy toe is important because you get your squirrels on the board. Um, and at the bottom it says, let's see him squirrel out of this. <laughs> Sorry if I scared you. Thanks for watching the video. This video takes a lot of time to make and I just wanted to let you know there are a couple ways you could help me out so I can continue making content like this. Of course, you can comment, like, and subscribe. That's hugely appreciated. But also you can support me at patreon.com slash captaincrockpot.
And also, if you look down below, there's links to almost everything in this video, from the games, to my video setup, to uh, my unmatched storage solution. It's all available because I totally believe I totally back it 100%. And I want you to be able to have it. Most of the links are Amazon. I'm an Amazon affiliate, so I will make a small percentage. I wouldn't give you guys any recommendations that I would not buy myself. And most of everything that is in there, I have bought myself. Continue watching, thank you for your support, and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye. Yeah. Squirrel Girl, Horde of Squirrels. Awesome artwork, they are killing this dude. They have, they have, there's so many squirrels. Like, look how many squirrels, that, that's like a million. Uh, not really, it's like a, let me, let me count, 36. All right, Horde of Squirrels. Choose a space with four or more squirrels adjacent to it. So this is where you wanna get your adjacent, your squirrels adjacent. The problem with this is, of course, yeah, I'm adjacent to him. I used this card second action because I had to maneuver my squirrels in. Of course, he didn't just stay there while my squirrels were next to him. So I maneuver it in. I use this card, and then next turn my squirrels are dead. But it is important. It says uh, it smells nicer than you'd think in there, by the way. So I'm not sure where the squirrels are going. I don't want to know. Uh, kick butts. During combat. Increase the value of this card by one for each squirrel adjacent to the opposing fighter. In a perfect world, this card hits super hard. In a perfect world, this card does this much damage. It does one plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a nine attack. This will most likely never happen. In reality, this is usually what happens. This is usually one of the last cards played as an attack, and it's used for like, maybe that. So at four. Um, so on paper, it would be so cool. Man, if you can get a nine valued attack, I applaud you. It just takes so much work to get that. Um, but in, on, on paper, it's a great attack. It should work, it should be awesome. In reality, it just doesn't work out that way. Um, see, math comes in useful even in battle, so adding is fun. This card is her most important card, but there's only one copy. Um, it says Nutwork of Spies. It's also really cool artwork. I love this card. Um, if this was two copies, it would make her really, really, really strong. Look at an opponent's, not really strong, it would make her better. Uh, look at an opponent's hand and choose one card from the discard. If one of their fighters is adjacent to four or more squirrels, choose two cards instead. So again, if we have, I'm just gonna keep doing this for you. There you go. If we have four squirrels adjacent, we gotta take two cards instead. One card, two cards, all right? That's not work of spies. Next card, we have squirrel agility. This is a cool card, I like this card. So three value defense. And this is Squirrel Agility. After combat, move Squirrel Girl up to three spaces. She may move through sidekicks. Do not count movement for spaces containing sidekicks. She gets attacked. She plays Squirrel Agility. So she goes one. She wants to get away. One. Don't count it. Two. Don't count it. Don't count it. Three. So she could really move across the board um, away if she wants to as well as she can get gain ground. So let's say she's here, right? Same thing. So, well, if I'm in the same, usually three is in the same zone anyways, but anyways, let's, let's say it's like this. Let's say, yeah, he's right there. She's right there. Well, it doesn't, you know what I'm saying. Let's say this is the same zone. Okay, she goes one, two, and she's there adjacent to him. So it's got some use. Um, I wouldn't chuck these cards, you want to keep them, it's two, two boost, but you probably need it for actual game winning purposes. One of her better cards, it's a little confusing because it says it's a skirmish, so you would think it's a skirmish, but it's not. It's a four versatile. Uh, after combat, summon a squirrel in Squirrel Girl's space, then place Squirrel Girl in any space in her zone. What? It is absolutely a word, skirmish. So what this looks like is this. You're gonna summon a squirrel in her space 
and then place her any space in her zone. You can place her, of course, anywhere in her zone. Um, that's what that does. Pretty good card. You're getting squirrels on the board. It's a four versatile. Very, very good. And then you have, the, her, this is her most important card. This is the best card in her deck. Um, you can use it as an attack or defense. It's a versatile four. It's called the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. And with a boost of one, it says immediately, if there are four more squirrels adjacent to the opposing fighter, cancel all effects on your opponent's card and ignore its value. This is huge. This is similar to the, the Huntsman card and to Little Red's card, except it is dependent on these squirrels being here. They must be adjacent. They must be near. Um, and there must be four of them. So if she goes in and attacks right now, she is going to um, she's going to cancel the effects on this card, and she's going to ignore the value. This is a great opening attack. Of course, she'll probably never opening attack with four squirrels, but it's really great if she can. Uh, this is also well. Let's just see. So now, if we remove a squirrel, what do we have? We just have a four versatile. It's not going to cancel, and it's not going to ignore the value. So that's important to know. Make sure you count your squirrels. Um, and there you have Squirrel Girl. Uh, fun to play. I think she'll be a lot of fun to play um, in, un in the uh, Tales to Amaze and Mesh Adventures. Um, I, think, I think she'll be fun there. She'll be fun in casual games. I don't think she's competitively viable. I'd love to be proven wrong on that. And I'd love to see her play. I'd love for, to see her take down some, some, some fighters. People always say she can beat Yen. Uh, I've played Yen into her three times. I've won that as Yen with 15 health, with 14 health, and with seven health against good Squirrel Girl players. Now, those were on maps that I liked, so that's probably why. But uh, yeah, I'm curious. What, what are her best maps? I think this might be one. Um, looking at her again, let me show you. This is actually very important, and I forgot about this. Let's say, let's say that we've got the slushy there. We've got the plus two here. This is where I think she can be actually competitive, competitively viable. And it's really for this instance alone, uh, where you can't camp anything with her. So let's say that Muldoon's camping this plus two, because that's just you know what people do. What, what she could do is Squirrel Girl can spawn her squirrel adjacent to her. She could maneuver boost, get her squirrel in his space, because that's how some all fighters work. She can now attack with this squirrel to him using the plus two. Uh, that is incredible. Likewise, let's say he's camping the, the heal here. He's, he needs some healing. He's just sitting on it. Squirrel girl, the little squirrels can run in, use the slushy right from underneath him. And this works on all the maps with the tokens. That's very important. And uh, that alone makes me really want to play her um, on these boards. Um, and I think that she could win matchups otherwise that she would not win because she has the ability to get every single token on the board in every single game. Um, so don't sleep on her, even though I've been talking a lot of trash. That's Squirrel Girl. All right, last but not least, we have Miss Marvel. And Miss Marvel is awesome. She's one of my favorites from the set. Um, I think she's the most competitively viable, for sure. Uh, her ability, well, first off, she is a uh, melee fighter. She's 14 health with two move. At the start of your turn, you may move Miss Marvel one space. Miss Marvel can attack from up to two spaces away, ignoring zones. So, start of your turn. You haven't done anything yet, you get a bounce. It's a reverse Bruce Lee, you get a bounce, and you are like T-Rex. You can attack without, with ignoring zones up to two spaces away because of course you have these big old hands you can stretch and punch and all that jazz. So you could attack right now, even though he can't attack you, you could attack him. That's great. And of course, our favorite phrase in the community is, a hero is just somebody who tries to do the right thing even when it's hard. So true. She has 14 health. Her cards. We have the big windup. This is where you're going to find most of your damage. The big windup 
is a four attack, a four value attack. It's two boost. During combat, if Miss Marvel's space shares no zones with the opposing fighter, you may boost this card. So, if she shares, if her space shares no zones with the opposing fighter, she's in yellow, orange, he's in green, you may boost this card. You may not boost this card because now you share the same zone. You may not boost this card. You may boost this card. Um, this is telegraphed, but also because of that you can use uh, other attacks as bait to get them to faint when you're doing this attack. The next card we have, easy peasy. It's a three value versatile, it's a two boost, and after combat, draw one card. Then if you have four or more cards in your hand, deal one damage to an adjacent fighter. So, so you've got three cards in hand, it says draw one card, so you draw one card. Then, if you have four or more cards in your hand, deal one damage to... I have four, look at that. I get to deal one damage to him because I'm adjacent. That's what that does. Um, of course, if you don't have four, you can't do the damage. You would still draw the card, though, getting up to three if you had two. It's a pretty good card. Uh, it keeps up the aggression, keeps your, your tempo, um, giving you your hand, uh, which is what you need. You need a good hand in this with her. Um, and uh, you get some, some auto damage, which is nice if you're adjacent. Usually, you'll be using this on defense against uh, melee fighters. That's usually how this would come up. Um, everybody else on offense, you'll be attacking from two away. You're not going to be doing uh, adjacent stuff too often, unless you need the zone, that kind of thing. Um, but mostly, you'll be staying two away. And Biggin. It's a three value versatile with a three value boost. And this is another huge card for her. It says, during combat, if Miss Marvel is in more zones than the opposing fighter, the value of this card is six instead. More zones than the opposing fighter. So, look at that. This would trigger. If he's here, this would trigger. What you want to look for are situations to set up things like this. If I'm in this space, I could do this one or this one. That's awesome. So you want to you want to look for spaces where you can can set this up. Um, again, it's just about having being in more zones. This one is in being in different zones. We have faint. Uh, you have three copies. That's good. Next we have fangirl. It's a zero uh, value attack. It's a two value boost. And the during combat, the value of this card is equal to the number of cards in your hand. I love it because thematically, her hand size. Right, the bigger her hand, the more it would hurt if she punched you in the face. So the bigger hand you have of cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, I play this card, awesome. Now, I'm hitting for six. Now it's important to know if, let's say he made me discard a card, discard the card, my attack just went down. My, now my attack is a five. If they're defending with it during combat, that would happen, or immediately the, the trigger would happen before you get to add up what your defense, your attack is. It's a good card. You want to be having a uh, big hand size when you go in with this card. Again, this is this is just something you want to think about. But if I have six cards in hand and I'm in this space, let's say I bounce to it actually. Well, we'll get there in a second. I bounce to that space and I'm attacking. I've got six cards in hand. All of these cards, I'm just going to skip ahead to the momentous because you know what a momentous is. All of these cards are going to trigger. That's terrifying for this person. If I've got six cards in hand, I'm in more zones than the, than the opponent, and I'm in different zones than the opponent, um, and I moved at the start of my turn. All of these will trigger. You want to be thinking about that. Even if you're only playing uh, a Momentous on that turn, or you're only playing the, the Fangirl on that turn, um, you want to set it up like you're playing any of the other cards. I wouldn't want to bounce to there to make to lose this because then this, this card becomes offline. So now they're like, oh, I know it's not that one. It's going to be one of these two. Um, so you want to you want to do as much as you can to set up the appearance of the other of the other cards. We have Euro and Fries. I love Euros. I don't know if anybody else does, but man, do I love Euros. Um, I call them Euros. 
Some people call them heroes, gyros, 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 I don't know. Uh, I call them euros though. That's what they were called when I went to Germany and ate them. And man, they are good. Um, I found some really good euro places. And uh, one of my favorite foods, for sure. One of my favorite foods. Recover two health. Then if you have four or more cards in your hand, gain an action. This is exciting because it is, one, it's a scheme. It's a heal. Okay, two health. Sweet, I can go up to 14 if I'm at 12. Incredible. Also, if you have four more cards, you can gain an action. I, it's up to, it's, it's a game state, it's a game dependent, game state dependent situational thing because let's say that you have, I mean, if, you, if you're taking damage and you are going for fatigue, you're going to want to have less cards so that you don't gain the action. Of course, you'll have then, you'll have less cards, so it's going to be maybe a scary situation to be in. But, um, of course, if you want to get the cards, you want to get the hand advantage, you want to keep the, the tempo going, you can use it to gain the action when you have four cards. Um, and that can be a really good thing for you. I'm not touching you. Uh, she's got long hands, so she can touch you without you knowing it, I guess. So, this is one of the worst cards in her deck, but it's still a four attack. And that tells you a lot about her deck. So this is a four value attack with a one boost. It's after combat. If Miss Marvel's space shares no zones with the opposing fighter, draw two cards. I have used this to bait out feints intentionally, and I've also used it to get the draw two intentionally. It's not a terrible card, um, but it's not great. So again, if, if you share no zones with the opposing fighter, you're gonna draw two cards. If I attack with this from here, I'm going to get to draw two cards. I may want to not do that. I may want to move to here. Well, let's get to where it's legal. I may want to move to here to attack so that I'm not gonna draw those cards. There's, there's situations where you definitely don't wanna draw cards, but you wanna keep the, the pressure on and keep attacking. So that's when that card will come in handy. Meta shift. Incredible in her deck. Remember your ability, you get to bounce. So every turn, this should be online. Every turn you get to bounce and attack. Let's say that we're fighting a, a melee fighter. Melee fighter comes in and attacks. Well, start of your turn, you bounce and you get to attack. And, the, and so your momentum shift will always be online. It's always gonna be scary. Um, you're always threatening that five. That's, that's huge. You don't want to have to use this on defense. If you do, you, you're in trouble, but uh, you want to really make it so you're not using those on defense. Um, getting those on offense would be, would be huge. Here we have the shrink, shrink, shrink. And uh, it's a two value, versatile. After combat, choose one effect. If Miss Marvel Space shares no zones with the opposing fighter, do both. So after combat, you're guaranteed to do one effect. So let's say we're here. I play this card, I get to choose. Opponent discards one card or move the opposing fighter up to three spaces. This is an awesome card. One of my favorite cards in her deck. It's so, uh, I think it's undervalued, but I love it. Uh, especially in certain maps like Raptor Paddock, you can push them into the pit. Um, if, the, if the discard is what you're looking for, you go for the discard. There's so many situations you can use it. And then of course, if you are in different zones, then you can do both. Now, to be in different zones, you're either doing something like this. Let's say that was here. That might be what you want to do. Um, he would need to move in adjacent to me to attack uh, if he couldn't, if he'd have to like boost to get to there or something to get my zone. So you're going to want to set this up. If you have this card, you can set it up to make it so it's a hard cutoff. If you're sitting there, then he's he could, just going to walk in here and then you know, in the same zone, so you won't get both of those. So you want to set that up to get both of those effects off if you can. Slingshot. This is an important card. This will get you out of pins. You're a solo fighter, so pinning you is great. Uh, pinning is also great because it can keep you in um, zones you don't want to be. Uh, I was playing a game and I got pinned right here. Um, can you see? Yeah, you can see that. Well, let's do it. Let's show this. It's like, let's say I got pinned right here. By the classic Deadpool Muldoon teammate teaming system. Uh, so 
if you get pinned like this, you're not getting your bounce, so you're not setting your momentuses online. You are not in different zones. You're not in more zones, so those are offline. You are, you are in trouble. You do not want to get pinned, and that's why slingshot is so important, because with slingshot, you can just bounce your way out, because it's a three-value defense. Place, after combat, plays Miss Marvel in any space in her zone, so that's, that's pretty huge. Um, to getting out of pins, uh, just getting anywhere you need to go, uh, you just sling, slingshot your way there. And of course, man is it cool when they do this. I love how she's using the card itself to slingshot herself, that is really cool. And then, one of the most important cards in your deck, and it is not because of anything that this says. This is a scheme. It's friends and family. It's a cool picture. I like the artwork. It's a four boost and that's why it's important. The card says draw two cards, then you may spend an additional action to draw until you have seven cards in hand. Um, I have never used this ability. There might be times when you need to. If it's, let's say it's your last card and, and they've just got a whole hand of cards. Let's say it's like T-Rex or something. They've just got a whole hand of cards. You may want to use that ability. but. The way that I've always used it, and the way that I love to use it, is with the big windup. If you can get the big windup boosted with this, you now have an eight attack, and that's going to hit over most things because this didn't get fainted, so you already got the boost in. Uh, this is going to hit over a lot, and uh, you're looking to do six damage plus, um, not four damage plus, I guess. Uh, Really, really great. That's how I would use this card. But of course, it's situational. Um, yeah, she's just a very situational character. I really enjoy her. Um, very, very versatile and uh, a lot of fun to play. We also have the board. It's a Navy Pier. It's a very cool looking board. Um, very cool looking, looking uh, map. And uh, it's one of the biggest maps we have. You would randomize these uh, as usual. You'd, you'd like to shake them up and then go left to right. Um, you have your items, you got a plus two, plus one, plus one, um, and then those three schemes with the slushy being the, the most detrimental and, and crazy. Um, but it's a big map. I mean, to get from one space to the other, from one to two, it's a lot of walking. The quickest way, of course, is to go through the middle. Um, and then you've got this weird, look at this, this is a weird... This crosses over but doesn't go. It's, it, it can be really confusing to look at, and I've played it a couple times, and I've, I'm still not fully used to it. Um, the zones are very confusing, uh, but it's a fun map to play on. I, 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 uh, I wouldn't want to bring every fighter here, but I, but I definitely, I wouldn't just rule it out. This is a, this is a fun map to play on, um, especially if you can get that slushy. The last thing we're going to look at is if you pre-ordered this, which we, I did, it comes with three foils, which, man, I love my foils. Restoration Games knows what they're doing. They know, they know what we like. And we have some awesome, awesome foils. Oh, that's a cool one. I don't know if you can see this. I hope you can. Um, the one for Cloak and Dagger. It's called Traverse the Dark Force. And that one, that's just gorgeous. That's like a, it's like a purplish blue, um, purplish bluish silver. Oh man, that just, mmm. Fangirl. I love the gold. I don't love where it is, but I love the gold. That's a very, very, very fancy, beautiful, look, oh man, yeah, that's nice. Uh, and then Tippy Toe, this is actually really cool, this is one of the coolest ones. It outlines the squirrel, so there you have it. There are the foils for those decks. And that comes with the pre-order, or uh, with, if you buy it, I think it comes in, I think if you buy it right now, you can get the, the foils actually. It may not just be the pre-order. So I hope you can get your hands on these because they are they're absolutely beautiful. I hope you enjoyed my unboxing of Teen Spirit. Uh, this, was, this was a fun box to go through, a fun set to go through. I highly recommend it. 
definitely buy the set uh, for Miss Marvel, for the map, for uh, Cloak and Dagger alone. It's worth it. It's a beautiful set. Can't wait to play it more. Really fun. And the link's down in the description. Uh, you can pick up your own copy. Please comment, subscribe, uh, and let me know in the comments what you think about uh, this unboxing, about how I did it. I tried to add my own little spin to it. Um, and it's also like 12, 12 a.m. here. Uh, I'm pretty tired. I'm not the first to unbox Teen Spirit, but I just wanted to get my, my first unboxing uh, on the channel. I know I'm super late. Most of us are already playing with it, and we've already pre-ordered uh, for King and Country. Thank you for watching. Uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon and subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. Uh, it, it means a lot. It's really helpful. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at the table again. Now hear this, now hear this. This is your captain speaking. What a turnout. What happened here was a miracle. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people. Ladies and gentlemen, you have now seen the impossible. I did you. My friend. I thank you for your support. Couldn't be more proud of you. Get a heart and soul of this team. You and I are a team. Nothing is more important than our friendship. We need you, Biff. I have you to thank. Couldn't have done it without you. This is for you, buddy. So without further eloquence... Thank you.